नमस्ते डियर स्टूडेंट्स यू आर वेलकम टू द येट अनादर एडिशन ऑफ विद्यार्थी विज्ञान मंथन दिस ईयर वी हैव रिकॉर्ड नंबर ऑफ रजिस्ट्रेशन फॉर विद्यार्थी विज्ञान मंथन and we are really excited to offer you many new things which will happen in the first second third level exam all of you know that india's contribution to science and life stories of indian scientist are the very unique features of vidyarthi vigyan mantra i am sure that all of you are preparing well you have downloaded the study material and you are also giving mock exams the literature related to videos related to ics are there on our youtube channel but every year we try to have a new scientist this year scientist is professor birbal sahani and we have a wonderful book which is written by dr notial and we are happy to have dr notial with us who is going to have interaction some discussion on this particular topic will share about this this year's uh, eminent scientists which we have chosen to conduct this particular interaction we have dr vishnu vaze who is our content coordinator and core team member of vidyarthi vigyan manthan before passing on it to dr vaze i would like to briefly introduce about notial ji we have honor and pleasure to have dr chandramohan notial ji who is a scientist and science communicator basically a physicist having studied from masters at what is now known as iit roorkee he joined prl ahmedabad for phd and then for post doctoral research in 1977 he was also scientific collaborator of nasa's lunar samples from apollo mission later he joined birbal sahani institute of paleo sciences which is known as bsip and then he retired in 2016 as a scientist in charge of radio carbon lab and because notial ji worked in the institute which is named after birbal sahani we made a special request to notial ji that he should probably is the best person to write this book notial ji was at max planck institute and hedel uh, and hedelberg for uh, insa dfr fellowship during 1989 and 90 and now he is a consultant to indian national science academy new delhi for last 4 years we are privileged to have notial ji here he will interact with all the students so that you will understand that this particular book which he has written will be a fun reading for all of you and next few days almost we have a week uh, before we go for the first level exam uh, you will feel uh, that yes it is um, worth knowing about great indian scientists and their contribution to science so over to dr vaze and uh, we i am sure that we will have a fun time in next 45 minutes or so thank you sir you are mute we heard about dr notial just now and we are going to interact with him to know more about the book which he has written on professor birbal sahani it's it's great pleasure for me as well as for all the students and all the viewers that the one who has written the book himself is in front of us and we definitely would know more about the personality which he has written about in that particular book and there is one more thing which is very important and that is he also is scientist so scientist writing about scientist 
is definitely going to be a pleasurable thing for us. Not only that, he also worked in the same institute with by Dr. Dribal Sihani. So with these many good things about Dr. Chandra Mohan Nautia, we are going to interact with him about the book which he has authored for Professor Dribal Sihani. Sir, no yes, sir. I have a question for you. Yeah. What really inspired you to write about this particular person, then, Dr. Sahan? Uh, thank you, Dr. Vazay. Uh, are you able to hear me correctly? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Professor Birbal Sahani was a very, very unique personality. Uh, I didn't know much about him before I joined the Birbal Sahani Institute of... At that time, it was known as Birbal Sahani Institute of Paleobotany. And later, the name was modified to Birbal Sahani Institute of Paleosciences. Uh, the reason was uh, simple that now it includes many fields, many subjects, experts from different disciplines, from geology, from physics, from chemistry, and uh, also from archaeobotany and so on. So now this is known as the Institute of Paleo Sciences. But basically, it continues to uh, move along the same direction which Professor Sahani had uh, envisaged. Professor Sahani was a botanist by training. He had studied at Cambridge. But he was also a philosopher. And I think I have been impressed by uh, Professor uh, Birbal Sahani uh, not only as a scientist, but also as a philosopher. If you look at his writing in some of the places, he has so beautifully written, uh, so beautifully he has written about uh, not only plants, but also about the philosophy behind the research, the philosophy behind science. For example, at one place he says that, uh, like a child, uh, we also stumble uh, after some steps, and then we pick up and start doing or learning again. Similarly, he says about uh, God, uh, nobody knows whether he was uh, uh, conventionally, conventionally he was religious, he was a, a believer or not. But he always said that uh, whatever models we set, whatever ideals we set, that is the form of worshipping, uh, that is the form of God. So I find his personality very, very interesting. And this is in addition to the fact, of course, that I was uh, working in the Institute of uh, Paleobotany, the Birbal Sahani Institute of Paleosciences, as it is now known, uh, right from 1985 to 2016, which is a uh, very, very long time. In the course of it, I saw his beautiful collections of fossils in the museum. I interacted with some of the people who had seen him. It was uh, my misfortune that I never saw him. I couldn't because he, was, uh, he had passed away before I was born. He passed away in 1949 on 10th of April. Uh, I was born in 1956. Uh, but I have read his articles. I have uh, talked to people who had seen him and the tremendous respect in which he was hailed by the people, his students, his uh, uh, young colleagues, and so on. So I all these things together. And then when Dr. Ranade and Dr. Um, Videsh Pandey, they approached me to write this book. I just grabbed the opportunity because I thought uh, I would enjoy the experience as much. And uh, indeed, I enjoyed right. writing this book very much. We are very thankful for that, sir, because as you accepted this particular invita invitation to write, definitely we all are blessed with your writing. Thank you. And, sir, the dimension of his personality, which underlines that he was a philosopher, not merely a scientist or not a teacher. That definitely is a grace for us. Uh, did he come from any uh, uh, family which, which has no connection with learning or things like that? Or was he from any particular very well read family? Yeah, Professor Sahani's father was a chemist. And uh, he was a <laughs> professor of chemistry and a chemist of repute. As uh, the students can see the details there, he had also worked in the Rutherford's lab. Uh, as you know, that the Rutherford was a Nobel laureate and in a laboratory which has perhaps produced the highest number of Nobel laureates in the world. So he had an opportunity to work even there. And uh, he was a chemist 
But more than that, there was another very interesting aspect of the personality of Professor Ruchiram Sahani. Uh, he used to go on bicycle from place to place and he would give popular science lectures in Punjab. And in those days, he even used to charge a small amount of money for that so that only those people who are interested in the subject come. Now, this is something really very interesting because if you give something free, people won't perhaps value it so much. So he set a small price for that entry and then he would uh, you know, show them even slides with a lantern projector which he was uh, carrying on his bicycle. So he was a chemist, as I said, and a very good chemist. Uh, and therefore, he had great value for education and science. He made sure that all his sons go abroad, mainly Cambridge, uh, to study. Uh, one son went to Manchester, uh, then uh, Professor uh, Birbal Sahani, his brother Amar Sahani, uh, his elder brother Vikram uh, Sahani, and uh, all of them went abroad and studied there. But now it didn't stop here. He made sure that even his daughter studied well. And his daughter was perhaps the first graduate for Punjab University in those days. So he valued education. So Professor Birbal Sahani came with this background, with this academic background in his family. And uh, his mother was a very religi religious person, she, uh, Mrs. Ishwari Devi. His grandfather was uh, not an academic. He was, you could say, uh, he was kind of a businessman, but he put great value on education and made sure that his son studied very well. So I think it's, it's a kind of family tradition they had, and therefore Professor Birbal Sahani also was in the same tradition. You are muted, uh, Dr. There is, great, yeah, there is a great uh, family legacy which he continued. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mokhiyalji, please tell us whether uh, young Birbal, was he a very quiet person or was he very naughty? Uh, contrary to the image of the scientists, as a child and even as an elder person, Professor Sahani, Professor Birbal Sahani was a very, very interesting personality. Uh, he was very uh, fond of, you know, uh, practical jokes. He even used to <laughs> carry... Uh, a monkey-like thing, it was a kind of a glove. He would put it on his, his hand and pretend it to be a monkey and then talk to children through that. Even, in fact, uh, after his marriage to uh, Mr. Savitri Sahani, uh, when he first time met Savitri Sahani, he thought that she, would, she wouldn't be feeling very comfortable, uh, you know, meeting a new person, entering a new life uh, in a new city and so on. So he started talking to her using that glove and that monkey. This uh, glove of monkey was his uh, permanent companion. And even when he used to travel, he would carry this glove with him and then talk to children uh, using that glove. And even as a child, he was quite uh, naughty, I would say. He was, uh, and he take part in sports also. And I think this is one more important lesson for our students. Uh, very often the students think that uh, scientists are, you know, very grim, very serious people, yes, they are serious about their work, but that does not mean they don't care for their physical fitness. Uh, I'll give you an example of Professor Biba Sahani. He used to play tennis. Uh, I will be showing a photograph of his. He used to play hockey. Even at Cambridge, he represented his uh, class uh, in the game of hockey, and he played some tournaments. Uh, but <laughs> again, the sports for him was not his destination. It was uh, to keep fit to keep himself in a, uh, in, a, in a form where he would be able to spend uh, efficiently his time for research. So I think whether you are in science or art or in any other field, physical fitness is also very important. Uh, I'll give you another example from the modern days. Uh, Professor Nityanan, who is at Lucknow, a very renowned uh, drug uh, scientist. He was director of the uh, Central Drug Research Institute, which is a very prestigious institution of uh, CSIR. He himself told me that as a child, as a student, he also used to play hockey. And he even he cares that, for his that's great. Yeah. So and uh, this I, was uh, really inspiring for us and our students especially that he was not a bookworm. 
he was not a he was playing he was playing all the possible games at that particular time and keeping himself fit but also thinking about science all the time because where wherever he explored naturally it was all science and scientific things behind in fact i have a question for you yeah yeah yes yes sir yes sir. Uh, i want to tell that he was also interested in the cultural things that was also oh, yes. uh, yeah he had interest in culture he had interest in uh, performances he used to interact with the young students particularly and he would enthuse them uh, he would talk to them about research he would talk to them about science and in a language which they would understand on one hand he had a very philosophical way of uh, uh, telling things and but this was when he was talking to the senior people to the professors to the faculty and the scientists but with children he would become like a child and interact with them just a child would interact with the children Uh, so i have one more question uh, this is regarding uh, the career which he chose or rather the line of study which he chose was paleobotany or paleontology was it a very popular field at that particular time uh no it was not in fact even his early papers were about the uh, botany of living plants for example in case of one a plant he found that the pollen of another plant were found near the abuse of that ginkgo now uh, normally you know one would get confused and would attribute them or would imagine that they were related to that plant he, but he went to the depth of the matter and then explained that this was a chance that they came and were found near that now somebody uh, like uh, professor mahadevan uh, he has commented that this is something really great because if we find the ovule and the pollen grains of some other plant together as a fossil we would get thoroughly confused but he was working and he published two very good papers on the botany of living plants at that time so initially uh, he did his work with seward uh, albert charles seward and uh, he was initially working in living plants but later he found that uh, the plants uh, ultimately they get converted to fossils and uh, somehow he got interested in fossils and he start, started working in uh, them Uh, in in the, in the field of fossils because he thought that they held clue to those plants which don't exist sometimes anymore he he used to say that fossils are like uh, a time machine just like if you sit in a time machine it's an imaginary hypothetical thing if you sit in a time machine and we press the button we can travel in the past so he said that looking at fossils is also like traveling in the time machine you can travel in the past and look at the world as it was thousands or lakhs of years ago so that that's very great that looking into past is possible with the help of fossils and fossils can tell us a lot many things about what has happened many many million years ago yeah and uh, i think dr sahani has really opened a new vista for understanding of paleobotany then Uh, so i would like to also uh, ask one or two more questions related to his uh, college education and early research and thereafter we'll come to his indian uh, contribution okay uh, his early uh, study he was born in bhera uh, but later they moved to lahore and his father was a chemistry professor but even at that time sahani uh, was not only a very good student as i said he was also a sports person and at that time he was every summer his father would take him to a place which was a very beautiful place and there were mountains all around and one of the favorite past time for sahani used to be along with his uh, siblings along with his brothers he would start traveling to a bit far away places and then explore things they would catch crabs they would look at the fish they would go by the stream going to the stream in fact there is a one very interesting story which his uh, younger brother amar sahani has written in one book they say that once it happened so uh, that uh, birbal sahani you know he was a kind of a, he had a leadership qualities so he had all these young uh, um, younger people <laughs> at his command so he would take them they would go there and one day it happened so that it was almost midnight but they were all enjoying their catching crabs looking at nature Uh, looking at the stones and the uh, hills and everything there and his uh, father got really worried because it was almost midnight 
uh, then people, you know, then started a search with lanterns and all. People started walking towards the jungle where these people could have gone. And finally, they found them. These uh, young uh, boys were still not tired. And then finally, they were persuaded to, to come back home. And uh, when his father asked him, they, they were a bit about it. He very honestly told them that we went there to catch crabs. We went there to look at the nature. And the father never scolded them. This was one great thing about Professor Ram Sahani, that he gave a free hand to these children. He had faith in their sense of responsibility because he knew that they were very studious. They used to study as much. But when it came to fun, having uh, during the summer vacation, for example, they would enjoy their summer vacation to the fullest and would explore nature. And uh, this, I think, was one thing which remained with uh, Birbal Sahani whole his life. And later, again, he came back to the same areas of Himachal and such a salt range area. And he would uh, explore there <coughs> and do research on fossils found there. So uh, that was a kind Sir, of... Sir, you underlined one important thing for us, for uh, our students as well as their parents. You said that uh, Professor Vichirani's father never stopped him from doing all the exploratory things. Yes. But you also said that Birbal did it with responsibility. Yes. I think the responsibility of a child is very important, but also the openness of the parents is equally important. If there has to be a right parenthood and right child. Thank yes. you, Doctor, for really telling us this particular message. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead in this particular book now. As far as uh, his studies are concerned, it was done abroad. And abroad, there are many facilities as it is available. But when it came to India, Definitely, it must not be a very easy or tough work for him. He must have faced certain difficulties. And whatever was the scene at that particular time, we are about we are talking about uh, a period which is about 70, 80 years ago, and no independence at that particular time. So, in that particular time, tell us please, what exactly he did so as to make the necessary arrangements in the funds which are little funds which are available to him so as to make this particular science popular in India. Yes, uh, I led, uh, I will just add one more thing there. Uh, adjustment in a new place is always a challenge. And since they were uh, five brothers and sisters, they had a big family, so he had always been in company. His brothers were sent to Cambridge. Uh, and he also was sent to Cambridge, but initially he was very homesick because he was used to, you know, the nice. very, very affectionate brothers and sisters and parents. So when he went there one day, he all of a sudden he left his place and went to his elder brother and said that I don't want to continue in Cambridge anymore. So he was uh, flummoxed. He said, why do you want to give up such a beautiful place? Cambridge uh, is a very uh, a prestigious place even at that time and even today. So he said, no, no, I am not feeling happy here and I want to go back to India. So his brother took a lot of time to convince and cajole and uh, finally convince him uh, that he should stay back there. But after that, things were OK. And he became a favorite student of his uh, guide also later. And it is PhD. And later, in fact, he was even awarded an honorary DSC in 1929 by the London University. After he came back to India, you are very correct that things were different. In Europe, the facilities for research were good, whereas in our country, particularly for a subject like paleobotany, which practically did not exist in the country. So doing research in that would demand some kind of infrastructure which we did not have in the laboratory. So when he came here uh, around 1920, uh, he first joined a BHU. But his interest was paleobotany, and he very soon realized that at BHU, uh, paleobotany was not one of the priorities. So he switched over to Punjab University. Uh, but then again, he realized that that was not a place where he could have full freedom to do his research in paleobotany because people were more comfortable doing the conventional botany. But Sahani was not a man who would go with the, uh, with the conventions always. He used to break new grounds. So he decided he explored here and there. And finally, he zeroed upon University of Lucknow. And so in 1921, he joined as professor and head of the botany department at Lucknow University. But now here, he had to start from scratch. 
there were no facilities there were no uh, infrastructure there were no machines uh, not even the staff which would help them to uh, you know make for example slides one very important thing in paleobotany is to cut slides thin sections from the fossil put them on the plate and look at them under the microscope after magnifying now for this you require very good uh, thin section so professor sahani with his own hands he used to make these sections study them under the microscope in fact there is a very interesting story that one a uh, european uh, scientist he came to lucknow university and uh, sahani sahab did not even have a room of his own being head and the professor he was uh, in a kind of a compartment in the museum so he was he was having a table and a chair there and he was sitting there so the professor uh, from england came and he looked around for professor sahani so he asked somebody where does professor sahani sit so they pointed out that he sits there so he was shocked he said professor sahani you don't even have a room of your own so professor sahani smiled and he said he said this is where i work and uh, then the professor said okay all the great scientists have worked in garrets in small places without so sahani always believed that it's the it's the spirit which is more important than the facilities today uh, we people complain about lack of facilities but professor sahani without any facilities he worked with his own hands used to make thin sections he would who would grind them he would polish them not only that if you look at the foundation stone of the birbal sahani institute of palaeo sciences that <coughs> that whole stone was done by professor sahani himself oh, yes. in 1949 uh, when the new building of the institute was uh, you know inaugurated at the then pm then this was done by professor sahani himself and he was so sensitive he had a very uh, great aesthetic sense and he used to uh, people say that after he finished it he complained to people about his own work he said well these grains which are dark should have been much smaller i have chosen uh, a wrong size of grains so he was very critical of his uh, own work uh, but that also shows that he used to believe uh, in working with his own hands so even without facilities very simple microscopes working with his own hands no funds later he managed some funds from the uh, one oil company and therefore they could buy some uh, some equipments for that but otherwise there were hardly any money available so without money he did so much which people are not able to do perhaps today with a lot of money so this was very important and uh, sir i'm very much thankful to you that you are telling our students and even parents the important things that at one point of time in the career everybody says i should leave this course i thought in a position to do but at the same time parents should take necessary care or the elder brother or sister should take care and make that person child understand that how uh, important is the course and also one more thing you underlined and that is after joining a particular career or a particular institute it's not always going to be very easy there can be adaptation there can be adjustments which have to be done so yeah. so thank you for that uh, now uh, let's go ahead and be in all this while i heard that he was very khadi what is the reason why was he not very western clothes yeah it was very was at that point in time yeah uh, when he was in europe he went to germany he went to uh, he was in cambridge uh, that is united kingdom at that time he was uh, wearing western clothes but he was very nationalistic at heart actually his father professor rujiram sahani stays in lahore was a hub of uh, uh, freedom fighters they used to visit him anyone who came to that place and he was nationalist or a nationalistic leader they would always visit uh, in fact uh, he became unpopular with the british government professor rujiram sahani became unpopular with the british people uh, because they felt that he had nationalistic traits and uh, it was against the british's interests once he even uh, threatened he was given some on, uh, honor and he wanted to return it and he returned it and then he was threatened that his pension would be stopped he said if you have guts do that but ultimately his pension was not stopped but he refused some honor which was given by the british government so that was a time when people were 
if you remember, 1942 was the time uh, when the Quick India movement started. But before that, uh, when uh, early 20th century, things were simmering in the country towards uh, independence. People were feeling that uh, Britishers are not good for the welfare of the nation, and therefore people were opposing him. So Professor Sahani's, Professor Ruchiram Sahani's house used to be a place where people with nationalist thinking would get together and talk about freedom and all. So this was one thing which influenced young uh, Birbal Sahani's mind, and he decided that he would always wear Indian clothes and not the Western clothes. He used to wear khadi, he used to wear achkan, and uh, he, you won't find his photographs from later years in Western dress. So this was because of his uh, nationalistic feeling. He was a Rashtriya person to the core. So after coming from abroad, uh, it was very easy for him to get a job in fact salary. But what uh, made him uh, struggle for making his own institute, opening his institute? Yes. Uh, Professor Sahani uh, came to uh, India and then, as I said, that he first joined uh, Banaras Hindu University for a very short time. And very soon, uh, after a few months, he went to uh, Punjab University. But then he uh, came back to Lucknow in 1921, the next year itself, and he uh, joined Lucknow University, where he established the Department of Botany and was professor and head. So at that time, there were very little funds available. But what he did was, even from his salary, whatever money he used to get, he would spend on his research. Whatever money he could manage from friends and later uh, from some oil companies and from uh, other people, he could manage uh, some funds. And whatever he had collected uh, in his will, he bequeathed everything to the Institute of Paleobotany. The original name of the, it was initially they started Paleobotanical Society. And then they formed Institute of Paleobotany. And it was only after his demise in 1949 uh, on 10th of April that after a few months' time, the governing body of the Institute of Paleobotany decided that the institute should be named after him. So all the money which he had, all the everything that he had, his huge collection of libraries, his huge collection of fossils, because he was uh, he had a very interesting habit. Whenever he used to go abroad, he would collect some fossils because he felt that if we want to study uh, paleobotany, we should not look only at the Indian fossils. He did many field trips to Punjab, to Himachal, uh, in the southern part of India, in the uh, eastern part of India, like uh, Bihar or uh, uh, now what is also Jharkhand and uh, Uttarakhand and all the places. But even when he would go abroad, he would always come back with some of the fossils. So these fossils were also his kind of property, but he donated everything to the Institute of Paribotany. His collection of books, his collection of research papers, and whatever money he was earning, all that he bequeathed to uh, Institute of Paribotany, and everything was, uh, again, the property of the Institute. So funds, yes, funds uh, initially was a very serious problem. Then I think some money came for the Institute from the Education Department, but that was after his demise, because uh, as you know, uh, the Institute's new building was inaugurated on 3rd of January, uh, 1949, uh, sorry, uh, 3rd of April, 1949, and he passed away on 10th of April, just a week after that. So he did not have much time to see his Institute. And Mrs. Sahani, his wife, took the responsibility after his demise and shouldered uh, this whole burden. So after so much of uh, career and uh, so much of fame in the uh, what do you think about his personality as a snobbish person or a very simple gentleman? Yeah, Professor Birbal Sahani was a very creative personality. I think his uh, left part of the brain and the right uh, part of the brain both were equally active. Therefore, he would write things in a very poetic manner. Even his uh, lectures during the Science Congress and other places used to be very, very poetic and very literary. Even at the time of uh, uh, inauguration of the new building or the foundation stone of the new building, he gave a speech which I think people, the young students should go to net 
and uh, read that speech. It was such a poetic thing. And he, you know, that he used to draw uh, figures on the blackboard with both his hands, with left and right. Oh. He would draw a figure, uh, the right part of the figure he would draw with the right hand and left part of the figure with his left hand. So this is how he used to work, like this. And this used to be a surprise to the students. And uh, his lectures were so popular that even those students who were not registered in his class, they used to come to listen to his lecture in the University of Lucknow. If the actual strength of the students in his class was, let us say, 30, you would find 60 students listening to his lectures. This was something, something really very strange. Today, you find that uh, professors uh, speak in the class and only half of the students are present. But <laughs> during Birbal Sahani's class, there used to be more students than the actual number of strengths, actual number of students in the class. So he was a very popular, very creative, and he used to lace his lectures with the anecdotes. He used to tell some very interesting stories. He used to uh, tell things in a very simple manner, and he would never scold the students. Uh, he had one uh, younger colleague, a student, Dr. Lakhan Pal, who was later a distinguished scientist at Birbal Sahani Institute uh, itself. And he once told me an anecdote. He said that uh, once somebody drew a diagram, and the diagram was incorrect. But Professor Sahani won't say that, no, no, what you have done is wrong. He would say, uh, dear friend, if I were you, I would draw it like this. And then he would draw the right figure and show it to the students. So students would never get demotivated. Now, I think that even when here I heard about this thing, uh, I was so inspired. So imagine the student who actually heard it from Professor Bibal Sahani. He had a very kind heart. There is a story about it. Uh, there was a young student by name, Mr. Pan, who later joined the Geological Survey of India. After the vacations, uh, when the vacation started, <laughs> that student wanted to go back home. He had a lot of luggage. In those days, people used to have hold -outs. So he had a lot of luggage. And just outside the university, he was waiting for uh, some transport. Now, today, if you go to that place, this is a very, very crowded place. When we go there, we don't find space where to park our uh, vehicle. But in those days, it used to be a desolate place. There won't be rickshaws or uh, ikkas or tanga, tongas or anything. So this boy was standing there with a lot of luggage and didn't know how to go to the railway station. And then he sees that there is a car coming from the other side. The car stops there <laughs> and then asks him, uh, what is the problem? This boy says, sir, I want to go to railway station, uh, which is uh, five, six kilometers from here. But I'm not getting a vehicle. How do I go? And that gentleman, an elderly person, senior person, very sophisticated, the young man, Paul, did not know him. But the, he said, just jump in, hop into the car with his luggage. He, he put the luggage in the car, sat himself. And that gentleman drove him to the railway station. So when he was getting back, this uh, boy, Paul, asked him, Sir, uh, may I know your good name? He said, Birbal Sahani. This incident. In Sanskrit, we say, Namanti Gundino Jana. Those who are very wise and those who are great people are definitely not uh, very stiff people. They go society so stiffly. Uh, sir, uh, you have a slide to show, otherwise, I have to know questions for you. Yeah. You want to show? This is there are any? Please, otherwise, I'll continue with the discussion. Shall we? Yeah, please. Uh, we can show uh -huh. some slides also. Uh, that will uh, give a kind yes. of an overview. Yeah. So uh, yes, yes, quickly, sir. a few seconds for each slide. Uh, Professor Birbal Sahani, I describe him as a man who did what he loved and he loved what we do. This is a great lesson in this saying. Sometimes we want to do certain things, but opportunity does not allow. The circumstances don't allow. In that case, whatever is the assigned job, do it most sincerely. Uh, Professor Birbal Sahani, for example, joined uh, Banaras Hindu University. He did not have much time, uh, much opportunities there. But whatever he did there, he did it with the most highest sincerity. Uh, we can see his ancestor's house there. Uh, his grandfather was very rich. But unfortunately, later, he lost of money. 
and Professor Ruchiram Sahani had to come back, uh, move to another place. And on the way, he did not have money. So he sat on the branch of a tree because he had a box of books with him. Uh, as I said, Professor Sahani used to uh, go for the field trips. He used to love them. Uh, this is a photograph from one of the fields. He used to have a good interaction with his friends uh, from Germany, from Europe, from uh, USA, and from uh, many other countries. These are some of his uh, German friends with whom he's uh, seen sitting. Uh, Mrs. Sahani and Professor Birbal Sahani, they were perfect partners. He always dressed Indian, as uh, Dr. Baze also pointed out, and uh, he disliked wearing any Western clothes. This Sherwani and Topi, it was only in, his, in the initial stage, particularly when he was uh, in uh, Europe, he used to wear that kind of clothes, but he switched over to Indian clothes completely. A very simple, very kind person. And in 1991, when Birbal Sahani Institute celebrated the centenary uh, of uh, his birth, at that time, these plaques were issued by Birbal Sahani Institute of Value Sciences. Uh, for example, even I have it. Uh, the government of India issued the PNT department. They issued first day covers and stamps in his memory, uh, which you can see, uh, I'm sure, in some of the websites where his photograph is painted. And it was again in 1991. Professor Sahani was a very, very senior person. He was on very good terms with all the great scientists of those times in India. Uh, you can see here with the ex-president uh, Professor Sarvapaldi Radhakrishnan and also with Bharat Ratna uh, C. V. Raman. Uh, he's uh, to the right of C. V. Raman. And he used to interact with C. V. Raman. In fact, when Dr. Homi Bhabha was to be nominated for the fellowship of the Royal Society, C. V. Raman wrote to him. This was the last rites which were performed in the premises of the Birbal Sahani Institute of Value Sciences. And every year, on 10th of September and on 14th of November, which are the death, day of his demise and his birth respectively, uh, Birbal Sahani Institute and other people pay tributes to him. And these are the two persons who were most important to him, uh, who inculcated him in the spirit of inquiry, the love for research and the love for science. His father, Ram Sahani Ji and mother, Ishwari Devi. This is how the Institute looked in the first photograph in the very beginning in uh, around 1949 and the later uh, in the when the new building <laughs> was uh, made in around 1980 and later a uh, building and now a new building is coming up which would be still more attractive only memory remains now for us for professor Biba sahani uh, but we pay tribute to him in fact if you go to the regional science city lucknow you will find his statue if you go to bitm kolkata you will find his statue he has left a stamp on time. Paleobotany as a discipline was established by him. He, institu he institutionalized paleobotany in the country, and therefore he's known as father of paleobotany in our country. He was ahead of his time. He supported uh, continental drift when people did not believe in it. So he indeed was a great man, a great patriot, a great scientist, and also a very, very great human being. Uh, it was great, and uh, the photograph which we had, you had shown about uh, Sarvapalli Radha Krishna and Sivi Raman and so I think they are our real stars. They normally uh, run behind the film stars, but I think these are our stars as far as the Indian scenario in science is concerned. So uh, sir, we are going towards the end of this particular session. So I have a couple of questions for you. Uh, first is, what is your takeaway from his book and from his life in general? You can tell us in brief. Uh, I think his life is a lesson to everyone. Number one, be serious about whatever you do. Try to do what you love. Because these days, uh, you very often find that students, uh, because of money or because of some... I'm not saying that everyone should take a penny bought me. That is neither desired nor is it possible. But whatever field attracts one, if you love certain field, one should work in that field. <laughs> Just because uh, some, uh, there is more money in some other field, one should not deviate to some other field. This is one great lesson. Professor Birbal Sahani loved Pelibotany. He loved fossils. He was curious and inquisitive by nature. And therefore, he chose research in Pelibotany as his uh, uh, profession. 
and therefore he succeeded in that. All over the world he is respected for this. So one great lesson is that one should identify one's love and then follow it. Second thing is put your heart in whatever you do. Number three, there will be obstacles, there will be limitations. You would never find ideal conditions to work. But one has to struggle and once you put in initial efforts, things would be much smoother and uh, there are chances of uh, success. So I think these are two great lessons. And third is your country should be niche, your, should be your priority. One should always love one's country. It's our duty to work for our nation. And nationalistic feeling is something which everyone should have, independent of what profession one is. Honesty, integrity, love for humanity, love for other people, and love for science. I think that is what uh, we should all follow. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Nautial, for letting us know about this very inspiring, very motivating scientist, a great nationalist, a great patriot, and a wonderful human being. I, as I mentioned in the initial comments that uniqueness about Vidyarth Vikyan Manthan is that we want those real heroes, those people who have contributed to science, technology, innovation, and they should be the real inspiration for today's youth. They should come forward and that's why uh, these become part of syllabus for Vidyarth Vikyan Manthan. Sir, thank you very much for accepting our request to write this book and to make sure that you, you deliver this wonderful lecture. I'm sure that many students uh, will find it easy to uh, listen to this particular conversation than, than just reading a book. So uh, I thank you all for accepting our invitation request and uh, participating in discussion. Dear students, uh, as I said in my initial remarks, the uniqueness is life story of Indian scientists, which we have covered. And there are many videos which are related to India's contribution to science on our YouTube page. I sincerely suggest, request all of you that whenever you have free time, you can watch those videos. One video per day can give you a lot of information in less technical language, simple language by eminent scientists, which will cover at least half of the syllabus on India's contribution to science. As all of you are aware that the mock tests are going on, giving a mock test will give you a feel about how that app will work, what kind of questions are asked, and the main exam will be hassle-free for all of you. You'll also know that whether your login is working or not, whether your phone is compatible for our app or not, whether we need to change your device or whether you need to update the app. So, Please visit to our website vvm.org.in for more updates and all the best for your exam preparation. Thank you very much, Dr. Vazay, for uh, conducting this interacting session. And thank you very much, Dr. Nautialji, for this wonderful, very useful and motivating session with our students. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Prashant, Dr. Vazir, uh, Engineer Rajkumar Sahab. And just one more thing I would like to point out. Please. In one of the tables at the end of the book, uh, his uh, uh, year of birth has been mistyped. It's 1869. Uh, it should be uh, 91 and not 89. In the beginning, it's given correctly in the yes. text. So we'll be getting it corrected when the book is printed. So I would just like to point out it was the 91 year and not 89 year of his birth. Thank you very much for this clarification. Thank you, Thank you so much, VVM and uh, Dr. Ranade, Dr. Pandey, Dr. Prashant, Dr. Vazay, and Rajkumarji. Thank you so much for inviting me.